story, you know, we want to be inspired, we want to be uh, delighted, no, no pressure, no pressure, right? So, um, so why don't we just start by you telling us, you know, a little about yourself, right? Where, how you came to be, where you grew up, what kind of things inspired you? So what about some of the, um, in other startups, right, some of the, the maybe the challenges you've had and, and, and how you overcame them? Challenges I've had in how to overcame them, oh my god. Who doesn't have a challenge when you're in a startup that's like really interesting? Right, right. Limited resources. Um, I will tell you about a company that I had that I gave up my identity to. So.
So now you're a mentor yourself too, right? Boomtown and other places. So what do you, what kind of advice or, or what I'm impact does it bring to you, you know, to be in a mentor? How does it help me to yeah. mentor? Yeah. Um, well, I love working with founders. That's like my favorite thing. Um, and I'll tell you more in a second about something that I've been working on and how that, when I'm working with them, I'm almost always focusing on sales and the idea that selling is all about serving. And a lot of the accelerators, like so many of them, focus on product, market fit, let's get to pitch day. And I always tell them, like, what happens after pitch day? If you're lucky, now you're meeting a boss who's going to want to see a higher valuation. Like, I don't care who you are, if you're a developer, whoever it is, you need to be thinking about the bottom line. And if you walk in there and you have a belief about salespeople that they're obnoxious and they're smart, you're like, how is that going to go? But if you reframe it and you see, okay, I was only in here because I know I can support you with something, like I know I actually have some type of value, then it just Is there, are there challenges like specific to, to female entrepreneurs? 
there's something that's a different frame for that. And so I think that being able to recognize the there's a value in what you're putting out there that we, that we don't have to oversell as much. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like that um, that in itself can be the pitch. Because if we, we feel like we have to overcompensate and show our work, like we have a
so um, such a big disconnect sometimes between what the actual on the ground experience is for the entrepreneurs and living it. And with that in mind, how I feel sorry for investors for three months that they might not sleep. shared the word. Um, I have so much more words. I, <laughs> I, I got that. But, but um, you know, there's a kind of alchemy, and like you said, you're literally borderline insane to yeah. grab these things. Um, and it's interesting that you said about, you know, purpose wasn't enough, right? Mm -hmm. um, you had this tremendous sense of purpose that this will help people and, and all this. Um, and yet without that, I, I think I guess my uh, my question is: How do you, when you look at someone and you and you see them with, in a similar situation, what's the missing ingredient that you feel uh, they need to get, or you can help them get that that you know make that purpose yeah. have some wings in a business sense? I think that I really want this to work, but I'm working on it. I think that the thing I can do that's the most supportive for entrepreneurs is what I do at the moment. I can tell you, like, I do sales and I help them learn this stuff, but really it's making a connection. If I can open one door for someone, that's, like, the most critical thing. And I'm fortunate that I, I, get to, I know a lot of people, I get to meet more people, and so literally when I can meet with someone, what I'm thinking of, like, what we met earlier, is who do you need to know, where do you, like, what events you need, like, and I'm racing through the list of, like, 10 people that you need to be connected with, like, that's probably one of the most impactful things you can do is open the door and make a right introduction for someone.
get so much slack because people think of them as good at simple Dan and Patrick, they don't care about women. They actually pay for women more. They're completely transparent with all of their stuff. They have a huge marketing campaign that they're coming out with. And I was like, I want to be with them. So um, I was fortunate that they actually read my email, which was all about acknowledging them, and have met with them, and they proposed a lot, and I got all of it. <laughs>
essentially it's like I'm going from one to maybe three or five people. Yeah. And I'm wondering more what to look for. I would say to they communicate. Can they talk to each other? And so like one of the things that I was doing in my company and that I do with founders is this eight-step process where we get them to create shared goals and operating instructions based on getting their expectations out. Because everybody has this like expectations are premeditated resentments and if they're not communicated. So with the founding team, especially just like two founders, the idea is that you're in a relationship with your company, like you're married to your company. And so it's good to know what the purpose is for that relationship and to get really clear on what are my wants, what are my needs, what are my fears and expectations. And then from those, you drop out the things that like just don't support you and then you create shared goals and stuff. Um, so that's like an example of something you might start with, but can they come back together? And once a month, they'll do that. Can they, can they have a conversation that's each other, put a correction in, or not, and then still move on. I think that um, it's probably one of the biggest reasons why companies do fail is like, it, it really is marriage, right? Because people are together all the time, and you're not able to talk to each other and get your shit out on the table and be heard, and then also to listen. One of the things that we're going to be doing, it's called a WTFIGO quarterly meeting. It's, it's the what the fuck is going on meeting. <laughs> and in that meeting, each person, this is like the founders, would share, this is what's going on for me. This is what's up. Like, we're so head down busy that we have to talk about anything that's going on with us. And then the other person shares. And then we step into each other's shoes and we experience it from their perspective, what's really going on for them. It's, it's totally different when you're standing in their shoes. And then you put whatever correction it is, and then you recommit to the relationship. You recommit, which sounds crazy, like I don't do this in my marriage, but like with my co-founder, like literally we've been, we've been doing this every quarter, and we just realized that why don't we make this like this is a positive thing, actually. We're recommitting to each other. And it's because we need to have like there's a reason we need to be talking. We just don't, we're working all the time and we're together all the time, but all we're talking about.
spirit of giving. I mean, I think it's really, it's really, uh, you know, energizing, and I think, it's, I think it's unique. I know it's more people that it. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I mean, that's what our whole focus is here. Is everyone here in Colorado is give first, right? And that's what we're saying. Like founders first. Um, there's this whole concept of like all that I give, I receive, and that sounds maybe a little insane, especially like when you're in startup mode and we're all trying to learn. I truly believe that if we base our model on that and we're continually giving, I think we're going to do really well for our founders. Yeah, because we're selling for them. How cool is that? Yeah. Great. Are you based in Boulder? I'm based in Boulder. Well, excellent. Well, thanks so much.